Have you ever heard of a microphone driving a radio purchase? That and much more on today's episode of Rick's Shop. So let me explain myself. Years ago, I was into CB pretty heavy. In the mid 80s, late 80s, early 90s, I had uh, quite a bit of CB equipment. I got into sideband and uh, spent a lot of time rag chewing on lower sideband on a frequency that I will not mention here. But had a lot of fun. Had a beam up in the air and had a group of friends that we'd stay up late at night and just chat on the radio and uh, had a pretty big circle of, of uh, ground that we covered too. It was probably, I don't know, probably 75 miles between the farthest station and, uh, and my place. So had a lot of fun on, on lower side band. Anyway, uh, spent a lot of time working on my radios. It's, it's basically how I got into the amateur radio hobby is by starting out with CB and I settled on a microphone years ago in the mid 80s that uh, is my go-to microphone and I'll show you that microphone right now what's left of it anyway so this is my favorite microphone right here of course some of you may recognize this this is a Turner plus two SSB and this is the guts of it right here. This is the early version that had the circuit board that goes up in the neck like so. It's actually my favorite version. But this one no longer works. And I think it might be the element that's bad, but I'm not sure. So I did go to a different microphone. When I found out that that one was dead, I purchased this microphone. Since I had a Kerber CB radio, I got a Kerber microphone. And this is this is a great mic. Highly recommend this microphone, Kerber Dynamite. They work very well. Um, it's a dynamic microphone, unlike the Turner Plus 2, which I believe is crystal ceramic. I never did figure out definitively which one of those it is. It's either crystal or ceramic, but I'm not sure which. But they sound very, very similar, which is really strange considering one's a dynamic and one's a ceramic or a crystal. But I uh, always wanted to repair one of the numerous plus twos that I had and get that back on the air. It's still my favorite microphone. They're a little bit warmer on air, and uh, I kind of like that especially for sideband, which is kind of tinny to start with. It, it kind of helps you on sideband. So here's some of my more, uh, more of my collection of turners. Here's, this is a dynamic microphone. No amplifier in it at all. It works, but it has no gain, so I don't use it that much. This is my go-to microphone now. This one is an amplified mic. This is the later style Turner Plus 2 that has the circuit board that's up here attached to the element. And uh, these use a Darlington transistor for amplification and they do have more gain than the older style Turner I found. And that's how I got this one so cheap. I got it at a ham fest. I think I paid 10 bucks for it. And it was the transistor that was bad. It was also wired wrong. I don't know how this thing ever functioned the way it was wired, but I rewired it first. It still didn't work. Did some testing and replaced the Darlington transistor on the circuit board and lo and behold it came to life. So this is the one that I use with my Cobra radio that I still have. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I also use this with my current HF radio. And this microphone is what drove me to buy a Yezu. Because doing research I couldn't get a definitive answer whether or not you could use an old style CV desk mic on an ICOM. But what I did find out is all the ICOMs model to model have different input impedances for microphones. 
And they also use condenser mics that have power running to them. And this one obviously doesn't need that. So I was unsure whether an ICOM 7300 would work with this old microphone that I have. So that drove my purchase of a Yaesu FT891. Because I knew the Yaesus would. I've done enough research and I've heard them on the air. I know that they work with the old school desk mics. The impedance is acceptable and they'll function just fine. And it does. You're going to hear that in just a little bit. And uh, you also hear that old Cobra radio of mine. I still have it. So, the subject of today's video is mostly if you're experimenting with microphones, and there's a bazillion of them out there, and you want to choose a microphone for your rig, how do you know if it sounds good or not? Really, I mean, you can, you can get on the radio and you can ask for an audio check, but audio checks are very subjective. You know, it, it, you know, the person on the other end of the radio might say, hey, that audio sounds really great, or, or it could be worse. Can I get an audio check on this rig? This is KJ7UQI. You sound like you have your underwear and your socks stuffed in your mouth. So, audio reports are very subjective. It, it, everybody wants different types of audio on the radio. I, I prefer more natural sounding audio warmer tones, more of a rag chewed uh, type of audio instead of a DX type of audio, which you'll hear a lot of people say that a DX type of audio is more mid-range and highs and more punchy, which is great. I, I understand the need for that when you're trying to, to uh, get over the noise floor, but that's not my preference. My preference is warmer tones and more natural sounding audio, that's why I like the Turner Plus 2 microphones. And um, there's all kinds of microphones out there that will give you similar sound, but I do not want to spend a lot of money on a microphone. Um, there's you know a few microphones out there that are quite pricey that sound wonderful on the air. I won't mention names. And if I could buy a radio where I could use the, the old Turner that I have, I'm used to that microphone, I really like it. So, how do you get an audio check on the radio that you can believe? I've heard conversations on HF where somebody asks for an audio check and somebody replies, yeah, that's great sounding audio. Yeah, it's nice and punchy. It sounds good. Don't change a thing. And I'm listening to the other person thinking, I wouldn't want my audio to sound like that. That sounds horrible. So... What's a, subject, a subjective opinion on audio? Well, the only way you're going to get a subjective opinion on audio is if you listen to it yourself. There used to be these boxes that you could buy where you could plug the microphone in one end of it and plug headphones in the other end of it and key down the mic and talk and you could hear the audio of the mic. And that's okay, but that's not going through the audio section of the radio. It's not going through the finals of the radio. It's not going out of the antenna of the radio and believe it or not I've heard messed up antennas cause audio issues in radios before it can happen so the only subjective way is to transmit and then receive and hear that audio and there's several ways to do that and I'm going to get into that right now so the, the, the ways that I do this is with SDRs software defined radios and you don't have to run out and buy one if you have a computer you can go to Kiwi SWR. It's, it's just a service that uh, allows you to pull up a web page, select a radio source somewhere in the world that your radio is able to reach, that you can make contact with, and then you can pull up the audio and actually transmit your radio, and the SDR at the other end of that connection will receive that and broadcast it on the Internet, and you can listen to it that way. So here's one example of that. Audio test, audio test, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Audio test, KG7, U2Y. So that was my FT891 with the Turner microphone broadcasting on 75 meters to an SDR that's in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in Las Vegas. It's 80 meters. My antenna is a, a, a cloud burner, so that's about the only one I can reach from here on 80 meters. But for some reason, 20 and 40 meters is, propagation is really weird to, tonight. I couldn't get that connection to go through, but 
80 meters was working fine. So Kiwi SWR is one way to do it, but you're kind of relying on conditions, propagation, and somebody else's SDR that it's set up and working properly. So not always the most reliable way to do it. So what I have done is I have purchased my own SDR, this little device right here, these are about 30 bucks on Amazon. You can plug that into a laptop and load some software and you can be up and running with uh, an SDR and you can transmit and receive uh, a vast variety of frequencies. It's, it's amazing what they can pick up. So that way I can select the frequency, I can just set my laptop up to receive that frequency, I can transmit my radio into a dummy load, so I'm not actually transmitting out on the air, and I can check my audio. I can, I can do a screen grab, you can use your favorite screen grab program to, to grab the screen of that SDR program that's running on your computer, and record that. So we record the audio, and then once you're done transmitting your test audio, you can go back to your laptop and you can replay that audio and listen to it and, and judge the quality of your audio to see if it's what you want or if it's, if it's in need of, of work or tweaking. So one of the things about the Yezus that everybody hates is the, the menus are just overwhelmingly confusing, and there are so many choices, and one of those choices in the Yezu is... EQ. So you get EQ settings off the processor, you get EQ settings on the processor, you can tweak your transmit audio in numerous ways and uh, that way you, if you have an SDR you can go back and, and listen to all those audio tweaks to see if, if it's going to work for you or not. So let's get into that. The first thing I'm going to do is we're going to go back in time. I'm going to show you this old Cobra radio and uh, I've had this for a long time. I bought it in the early 90s. It's a keeper. I've actually modified the audio circuit in this radio to allow more warm tones to pass the audio circuit of the radio. I have converted it to 10 meters. It no longer works on CB. Well, it might transmit down there, but since I've already worked on it, that's no longer legal, so I'm not going to do that. But it, it does work on 10 meters just fine. puts up more than 20 watts. has fantastic audio for what it is. And let's take a listen to that. Audio test, Cobra 142 GTO, Turner plus two microphone. Testing one, two, three, testing, testing one, two, three, four. KJ7, UQI. Not bad for a 40 year old rig, huh? Sounds pretty good. That's with the old Turner microphone. And uh, it doesn't sound much different with the Cobra Dynamite, to be truthful. Just a little bit warmer with that Turner. All right, now let's go to the Yezu. For the Yezu, I made up uh, an adapter that adapts to the, the RJ connector over to a 5-pin typical Cobra-style mic connection, so I can plug in various mics that I have laying around and uh, that work just fine with the Yezu. We're going to try the, uh, the Cobra Dynamic. Actually, no, we're going to try the Yezu hand mic, the stock Yezu hand mic on this, this radio. And in order to do that, I need to go back in the menus here real quick and, and change the settings. We need 50% mic gain. We need to drop the power down since I'm going to be transmitting into a dummy load. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to turn the EQ off for the hand mic. So let's take a listen to that. This is a test of the stock Yezu hand mic. Yezu FT891. Stock hand mic, testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four, KJ7 UQI. This is a test of the stock Yezu hand mic on an FT891 radio. Testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four, KJ7 UQI. Okay, that was the stock Yezu hand mic. Now let's move on to the Cobra Dynamite once again. Power is down to 20 watts. I'm transmitting into a dummy load. EQ is off. Processor is on for both of these tests, by the way, but it's not on very much. I think it's 20 or 30 percent, so just enough to, to give it a little bit more uh, punch, I guess. So here we go. Cobra Dynamite. Audio test number two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, four. 
This is a Yaesu FT891 with a Cobra disc mic, KJ7 UQI. And now let's move on to the Turner. This is the Turner Plus 2. EQ off. Running the Turner into my FT891. Let's give a listen. Audio test. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4. Yaesu FT891 with a Turner Plus 2 disc microphone. KJ7 UQI. And finally, for the final audio test, we're going to turn the EQ off. Or I'm sorry, we're going to turn the EQ on in the Yaesu. And I've got it set up to add a bit of high tones. So let's listen to that and see what it sounds like. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4. Audio test of the Yaesu FT891 with a Turner Plus 2 microphone. EQ on KJ7 EQI. And there you have it. What do you think about that? So old, vintage Citizens Band microphones used on a brand new Yaesu radio that's about two years old. And uh, they, they do work just fine. And uh, you have to pay particular attention to the mic gain. The Yezu does have a very strong front end, amplification audio front end for this thing. So I turn it way down. You can see I turned it down to 18. And uh, that's where I can run it and still have a useful volume control on the microphone. But hope that helps. I, uh, I hope that gives you a method that you can use to check your audio. Um, Kiwi SWR works fine if you have one local to you. You can just pull that up on your laptop, use your favorite screen grab program, and just record some audio and listen to it and see if it's what you like. Thanks for watching.